Hello, and welcome to the Granite Desk at Joshua Tree National Park. I'm Ranger Jesse. And I'm Ranger McKenzie. In today's episode, we're going to be learning about Joshua trees. Think about the plants where you live. Do they look the same or different than the ones that you see here? I bet they look different, unless you also live in the desert. The plants here are unique because they have to find a way to adapt to this hot and dry environment. In the 1930s, a woman named Minerva Hoyt wanted to form a park to help protect these unusual plants because she was worried they might be destroyed by people. The park ended up being named after just one, the Joshua tree, but there are over 750 species of plants that grow here. I see plenty around here, but not 750. I see shrubs, I see cacti. The pointy plant behind me is the Mojave Yucca. Don't see any Joshua trees though. Huh, you'd think in a place named Joshua Tree National Park, there'd be Joshua trees everywhere. Hmm, I wonder why they don't grow here at the desk. Let's meet Ranger Simone who would teach us more about Joshua trees and how they survive in the desert. Hi, I'm Ranger Simone and there are plenty of Joshua trees here. Where Ranger McKenzie and Jesse are at the desk, it's lower elevation so it's a little warmer and drier. Joshua trees prefer the higher elevation where it's cooler and a little bit wetter. We might even get a winter snowstorm. It's still a desert though, so it's hot and dry compared to most places, but even just a few degrees cooler can make a big difference. But all desert plants have to work hard to collect and store rainwater, and Joshua trees do this in a couple of different ways. These green spikes are their leaves. Careful, they're sharp. The fibers within these leaves have been used by people for many years to make baskets, sandals, and nets. Let's take a closer look at their shape. This slight curve helps channel rainwater to its trunk. Let's make this shape with our arms. Let's start by putting our pinkies together and our elbows together, holding up towards our belly button. Imagine how rainwater would roll down our arms towards our bodies. This is how water moves down a Joshua tree leaf. And what do Joshua trees do with all this water they collect? This is a slice of a Joshua tree trunk. Its fibrous texture stores water. Can you think of another plant that stores water? If you said cactus, you'd be right. Like a Joshua tree, the inside of a cactus acts like a sponge, storing water for the future. Both cacti and Joshua trees have shallow roots to help them collect rainwater. Joshua tree roots kind of look like spaghetti and they have hundreds of them to help drink water. If we look up, you can see that the older leaves turn brown, folding backwards, shading the trunk to protect it from the sun. The desert is a harsh environment, but Joshua trees and other desert plants have special strategies to help store water and protect themselves from the sun so they can survive here. This has been Ranger Simone for the Granite Desk. Back to you. Thanks, Ranger Simone. Now I see why we don't see Joshua trees here. They like to live in the cool climate in the high elevation desert. Where this creosote bush is happy to be here at the desk where it's a little warmer and drier. It even has a waxy coating on its leaves to help it retain water and keep it from losing it to evaporation. Each of these plants, the creosote, the Joshua tree, and the cacti are all specially adapted to live in this environment. As the climate changes, plants will respond to the differences in temperature and rainfall. Based on what we learned about Joshua trees, what do you think would happen to them if it gets warmer where they live? Scientists are also asking this question. They're studying the plants in the park, finding the answers, and learning what it means for our desert ecosystem. Thanks again for joining us on another Granite Disc Adventure. What, what will we, we explore, explore next? next?